This month on Connections. Our travels around Chicagoland begin on the Michigan Avenue Bridge at a new museum that provides a bird's eye view of the river. Then we'll take a short trip to State and Lake Streets and head underground to the Red Line, which, along with the Blue Line, now has wireless access. After traveling north to Howard Street, we'll transfer to the Purple Line to reach our destination, a quiet block with some very interesting shops, Main Street and Evanston. Then we'll take the number 93 bus south to Kedzie as we introduce you to the winning crew that helps keep CTA buses in top shape. At Kedzie, we'll board the Brown Line and tell you all about improvements to the line and show you some stations with artistic flair thanks to the CTA's Adopt-A-Station program. Finally at Belmont, we'll transfer to the number 77 bus, which takes us right to the front entrance of our last stop, the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum. There's lots to see and do in Chicago, and what better way than on board the CTA? Hi, I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to Connections, where you can learn all about using the CTA in and around Chicago. One of the best views of the city is from the Michigan Avenue Bridge. And now there's even more to see. The McCormick Tribune Bridge House and Chicago River Museum, our first stop. Now you can learn more about the Chicago River and its history by stepping into a bridge tower. The McCormick Tribune Bridge House and Chicago River Museum is the newest attraction on the banks of the river at Michigan Avenue. The museum explores the rich history of the city's river and how it influenced the development of Chicago. If we were standing here 350 years ago, we'd be knee deep in mud. We'd be standing next to a meandering prairie stream flowing into the lake. And Chicago grows very rapidly, which means big changes for the river, pollution, and then we talk about the recovery of the river and how today it's an entity that we can all enjoy and it can be used for many purposes. Throughout the five floors of the museum, you can discover how the Chicago River has been used over the centuries and pick up some interesting facts. For example, the river currently contains 70 species of fish. Visitors are also treated to bird's eye views of the river's daily activities. I think the history is excellent. These are all things that I've heard, but never seen them put together in such a great way. And then the views from the bridge house are just wonderful. Another museum highlight is that you can see close up the giant cogs and gears that raise and lower more than 4,000 tons of bridge so boats can pass through. You get to be underneath the bridge. When there's a bridge lift, you can watch it go up, you can see how it works, learn everything about bridges in Chicago that you've ever wanted to know. The Michigan Avenue Bridge itself contributed to Chicago's expansion. It was conceived as part of the 1909 Burnham Plan for Chicago. They intended to build this beautiful gateway to the north to rival the bridges of Paris and London and to really start the city's growth on the other side of the river. It was designed by Edward Bennett and by 1920 it was complete. The bridge towers were completed a few years later and then the sculptures were added and today you have this wonderful landmark bridge. The McCormick Tribune Bridge House and Chicago River Museum is open through September, so be sure to stop by and let the CTA take you there. Here's how. So step off the CTA and into the Bridge House Museum for a bit of history and a unique peek at the Chicago River. We're in the loop, about to head north on the Red Line, which, along with the Blue Line, has gone wireless. Thanks to state-of-the-art technology installed by the CTA, police, fire, and CTA personnel can communicate more effectively. And now, many customers can use wireless devices in the subway as well helping to keep their travel plans on track. 
Reliable communication in the underground tunnels of the CTA subway system was once a challenge, but not anymore. Last year, the CTA completed installation of state-of-the-art technology that enhances the existing two-way radio system and improves communications with Chicago police, fire, and emergency personnel. Yes, uh, could you meet me at Staten Lake in the subway? This summer, wireless service was also activated that enables customers to use cell phones in the subway. I feel that it's enhanced our security and also enhanced our customers' uh, service because they're able to uh, tell their loved ones, for example, I'm in the subway and I'll be home in about 15 minutes. Or um, they can report anything suspicious and enhance their own security and the security of their fellow customers and uh, CTA employees. The system provides complete coverage in the red and blue line subways from the time a train enters a tunnel until it exits. It's approximately 23 miles of subway system. It includes our stairwells, our mezzanine levels, our emergency exits. Pretty much encompasses every place an employee or a customer can be uh, in our subway system. The CTA spent more than three years planning and installing the system. With that technology in place, security in the subway has been given a boost, not to mention providing access for certain cell phone users. While we're doing that design, we discovered that for a little extra money, we can also uh, install a cellular system and thereby not only improving communications for our employees, but also for our customers. Wireless carriers who would like to provide their customers with service below ground can lease access to the infrastructure and add their own equipment. At the moment, only Chicago-based U.S. Cellular Corporation has connected to the CTA's wireless infrastructure. But the system is ready for any other providers who wish to sign on in the future. Our system is the only system in the United States that was built robust enough to include all wireless providers. And we're hoping and anticipating that all providers will sign up with us and thereby provide all our customers with the cellular coverage in the subways. The CTA encourages those using cell phones on the system below or above ground to always be mindful of other customers. The new system is just one of the ways the CTA is investing in technology to improve the transit experience for its customers. We continually try to make our service better for our customers and make it safer for our customers. A quick transfer to the Purple Line takes us north to a block filled with unusual shops. Main Street in Evanston is our destination. Step off the Purple Line at Main Street Station and you'll step into an eclectic corner of South Evanston. You might be surprised to find such a quiet, leafy neighborhood filled with hidden treasures such as Chicago rare books on Washington Street. You'll know you've arrived at Chicago Rare Book Center by the sidewalk carts selling secondhand books for a dollar on up. But inside the store is a different story. The books on the shelves are collectibles and they're priced to match. You notice the condition. This is pristine first edition in jacket and that's really, that's $450, but a lot of that value is the condition. Four book dealers came together to open Chicago Rare Book Center. We decided that we needed a place to show good books, and with each one of us bringing different specialties into the game, we were able to supply a large quantity of interesting books that individually we couldn't have done. Most of our inventory comes from private parties, people that have books that they've inherited, or people are moving, and uh, they bring them in and we buy them. One of the most interesting books at the center is a copy of The Lady of the Lake by Sir Walter Scott. But it isn't the novel alone that makes this book unique. On the front edge, it has a painting of the home of Sir Walter Scott, which is hidden under the gold leaf. But on the other side, there's yet another picture. This is Bothwell Castle. Bothwell Castle is the finest example of a 13th century castle from Scotland. The smallest book in the shop is by Winston Churchill and contains a letter he wrote about King George. And the oldest is a German Bible from 1561. It's not the first edition, it's about the third edition, but it's the attempt to make the Bible accessible to the common person in Germany who couldn't read Latin. Of course, Chicago Rare Book Center has something for everyone. This is a first American edition of Winnie the Pooh, and that's 
important to be in any children's collection. And many people love this book, even as a Christmas gift. It's just who doesn't love Winnie the Pooh? So whether you're truly a book collector or just a curious passerby, you can stop to browse at Chicago Rare Books. Books aren't the only rare items you can find near Main Street Station. How about a unique rock? At Dave's Down to Earth Rock Shop and Museum right on Main Street, you can dig into rocks, crystals, and even meteorites, as well as some other unusual items. I'm thinking of buying one of those butterflies up there, one of those bugs. Yeah, my mom seems to like the rocks here. Dave Douglas opened this Evanston shop simply because he loved rocks. He actually left Northwestern University early so he could spend his time collecting them. I had been collecting fossils since I was a kid, so I had some stuff to start the shop, but mainly what I wanted to do was just make enough money to finance another trip to go find rocks. Inside Dave's shop, you can ooh and ah over your favorite rocks as well as some Native American artifacts. But the real surprise is downstairs in Dave's Prehistoric Life Museum, where you'll find his personal collection of authentic geological finds on display. It's a, a lot of one-of-a-kind fossils that I had found and my family found uh, over the years. And we have the world's largest dinosaur egg down there and just a lot of unusual stuff. So stop by Dave's shop. He's likely to have any kind of rock you're looking for. <laughs> the only thing we don't really carry is diamonds, so, but about every other kind of rock. <laughs> Venture across Main Street and you'll find a global market at 10,000 villages. This store carries handcrafts, folk art, jewelry, home furnishings, instruments, and many more items from over 30 different countries. 10,000 Villages Evanston Store is one of 75 in the U.S. The purpose of the store is to help sustain people in third world countries through fair trade. Part of fair trade is to pay them half up front and half at the time that it's shipped. So they don't have to wait for it to be sold. We're taking all the risk in terms of that. We guarantee a living wage that's enough to cover housing, basic food, education, health care. These toy vicuñas are made by a Peruvian woman, Rosa Periones, who was living under a piece of corrugated tin with her nine children when she met people from 10,000 villages. She now employs uh, several dozen of her neighbors. She has exported over a million of these to 30 different countries worldwide because of the fair trade movement. And so whenever I tell Rosa's story, it reminds me what we're doing here. We're creating jobs that go on and on and on. You might find the prices at 10,000 Villages to be similar to other retail stores, but customers are pleased they're supporting a good cause. I know when I come here, I'm not buying something that children were exploited to produce, and I think that helps a lot when you're trying to buy something that's different and international. It's nice to know that you're also helping people. So take the CTA to Main Street Station to take in South Evanston's rare books, unique rocks, and handcrafts from around the world. Following the CTA's completion of the Main Street Viaduct Replacement Project in 2005, another one in Evanston is being improved. The Church Street Viaduct sits one block north of Davis Station on the Purple Line. Due to the deteriorated state of the nearly 100-year-old structure, trains have been forced to reduce their speeds when crossing the bridge. However, now that the CTA is replacing the viaduct with a steel structure, as well as new retaining walls, foundations, waterproofing, and drainage systems, the slow zone will be gone and travel times will improve for Purple Line customers. As part of the project, the CTA is also replacing rail ties, installing new landscaping, and replacing the lighting under the bridge. The Purple Line will continue to operate during construction, but may be suspended for a weekend when the new viaduct is rolled into place later this fall. The Main Street and Church Street viaducts are two of the six along the Purple Line that the CTA is planning to replace. We're about to travel south on the number 93 bus, which like all buses in the CTA fleet, 
is maintained by dedicated workers who take pride in their work. Some even compete in an annual contest that tests their skills and keeps them sharp to ensure safe and smooth travel for CTA customers on the move. Keeping CTA buses in top condition is a 24-hour job, one that Rich Dolan and Rob Burns do by day at North Park Garage and Brian Hedstrom does by night. But despite their different schedules, these three expert mechanics did manage to team up together for the CTA's annual rodeo. And in 2005, they took home first prize in the bus maintenance competition. Rich, Rob, and Brian went head-to-head -head against 15 other teams to come out on top. The bus maintenance competition involved the tasks these mechanics encounter every day on the job, like checking engines, transmissions, and air conditioning systems, plus a written exam. You have to know what you're doing. There's no cheating, no getting around it, no surprising anybody. You have to know what you're doing. On top of all that, the 2005 competition was unusually tight. Some of the guys are really, really sharp. In fact, if we had gotten one question wrong and the second place team had gotten one more question right, we would have been in second place. That's how close it was. Rich and Brian have known each other for more than 20 years, and they've won the rodeo together three other times. Rob was the newcomer, but he felt lucky to join a solid team, and now his name sits alongside his teammates on the plaque commemorating the win. It's nice to see our plaque in the office when you go in there and see our, uh, our names on the plaque. You know, that's a, it's a big deal, you know, it's nice. The rodeo competition was one day out of the year when Rich, Rob, and Brian were able to show their stuff. But it's the day-to-day -day work at the garage that they also enjoy. Here at North Park, we do have a lot of first-rate mechanics. We got excellent people that work here, and it's a real pleasure to work with them. They make it easy to come to work every day. It's, actually fun to come here. So remember, the next time you step on board a CTA bus, there are mechanics like Rich, Rob, and Brian working hard day and night to keep you on the move. We're heading to the Brown Line, one of the oldest and busiest in the CTA system. To accommodate customers in the surrounding neighborhoods, the CTA has begun renovating stations and platforms to help meet the demand. As work continues on the CTA's third busiest rail line, there is some exciting news for Brown Line customers. For their convenience, the Kedzie and Rockwell stations have reopened for service. The Kedzie and Rockwell stations were temporarily closed in February as part of the Brown Line Capacity Expansion Project. But last month, they opened a few days ahead of schedule, although work on the stations will continue through fall. The CTA's commitment to customers is to reopen stations as soon as possible to minimize inconvenience. It's really important that they open on time. Our customers uh, have been able to use it for the last uh, several weeks. They've enjoyed that. Uh, the businesses are happy that the, the stations open because people are able to come here directly. And I think that the time of remembering the construction and it being closed will fade into a distant memory as people get to enjoy uh, this wonderful station and the great service the CTA strives to provide here on the Brown Line and elsewhere. Both Kedzie and Rockwell sit at street level on the northern end of the Brown Line. Like the other stations along the line, Kedzie and Rockwell were built more than 100 years ago when far fewer customers used the line. Kedzie and Rockwell are being completely rebuilt. There are new station houses as well as longer and wider platforms which will reduce congestion and improve service for customers once the project is completed. I think part of it is to look forward to what comes out at the end of this, which is a new modern station with lots of amenities that will be there for decades. A total of 18 stations are included in the project. And when they're completed in 2009, customers will benefit from longer platforms that can accommodate longer trains so more people can board. There will also be more turnstiles, additional entrances and exits, and wider stairways. In addition to installing modern amenities like better lighting and state-of-the-art public address systems, the CTA is making stations fully ADA compliant by installing elevators or ramps, accessible turnstiles, braille signage, and tactile edging on the platforms. Previously, outside of the downtown area, we only had Kimball and Western. And now we've doubled that, because now we have Rockwell 
and Kedzie, and as we go along and redo all the stations on the Brown Line, they all will be accessible. In order to completely overhaul the Brown Line stations, 15 out of 18 will temporarily close. During station closures, the CTA encourages customers to use already existing service near the stations. In addition, the CTA supports businesses affected by the temporary closures by placing advertising cards inside Brown Line trains and area buses that remind customers that businesses are still open. When the project is completed, communities around the stations will benefit as well. We're keeping people on the trains, off the streets with their cars, and uh, we're building for the future and we'll probably will be able to accommodate a considerable amount of growth. Longer trains and accessible stations means more customers will be able to take public transit, saving them time, money, and the frustration of driving. Everything's beautiful, you know, brand new station, handicap accessible, so it's definitely going to be a great resource for those of us who live in this community. As you travel throughout the CTA rail system, you'll pass some interesting artwork along the way. It's all part of the Adopt-A-Station program, which was begun by the CTA to give stations a strong community identity and customers a little artistic lift each time they step on board. While you'd expect to stroll through one of Chicago's art galleries, how about taking your time when you travel through the CTA's train stations? Many stations have their own artwork, like this gallery at Merchandise Mart Station. It's all part of the CTA's Adopt-A-Station program, and it's there for you to enjoy. The Adopt-A-Station program allows community groups, businesses, schools, or organizations to adopt stations and make them more inviting and attractive for customers. The purpose of the Adopt Station program is really to make the station a gateway to the community, reflecting the culture and history of the community it serves. One of the most recent stations to be adopted was Midway Station, and brightly painted panels are mounted on beams that line the station's ceiling. They were created by 20 students from Urban Gateways, which offers before, after, and in-school art programs. We thought this would be a great uh, project for our organization to gain some visibility and to show the work that we do with students in the Chicago area. In order to complete the Midway project, the students studied the work of great artists, Picasso, Seurat, Rembrandt, and Van Gogh. The overall theme of the project is time. So children really studied the, the aspect of what time means, and we liked the in and out and the hustle and bustle of Midway really was a great theme for them to explore. And they came down here on site visits to look where their art was going to be installed to give them kind of inspiration as well as the artists that they studied. You might also notice new artwork on the blue and green lines. Logan Square Station was recently adopted by the Logan Square Neighborhood Association and Laramie Station by City Year Chicago. Both installations provide a warm reception for customers. I think they're surprised, you know, and it's a nice little welcoming to the people that enter the platform. It kind of brings color and vitality to the station. When adopting a station, the CTA works with the adopting organizations to designate a station and improve and install the artwork. While there is no fee to participate, the adopting organization is responsible for all of the costs surrounding the artwork installation. Since the Adopt-A-Station program started in 1997, more than 35 stations have been adopted, from Chicago Avenue on the Red Line to Conservatory on the Green. Each station is adopted for two years. Currently, 20 stations are in the program. People that adopt the stations are pleasantly surprised by all the positive publicity that they've gotten. And the community loves it because it makes the station more welcoming to the community. And it's just really a win-win for everybody. As the Adopt-A-Station program continues to beautify the CTA system, customers can take in the artwork along the way. And it's just something that I think that they can enjoy and if they have time they can stop and really look at, you know, the beautiful artwork or photography or whatever else is displayed at the station. 
You don't have to leave the city to get in touch with nature. In fact, the CTA can drop you off right in front of a place filled with butterflies, plants, and animals. The Notabart Nature Museum is our last stop. For a glimpse of what Chicago was like before settlers arrived, stop by the Notabart Nature Museum in Lincoln Park. The Nature Museum's prairie-like landscape shows visitors how the area looked before it was developed. And inside, children and adults can learn about the rivers, wetlands, and wildlife of Illinois. The goal of the museum is to let visitors have a hands-on experience with nature. I love the fact that people here can see nature up close. The fact that we have interpreters out on the floor showing people a frog, letting people touch a snake, and the fact that people may end up with a lifelong love of nature from coming to the Nature Museum is what I find the most fulfilling. The Nature Museum may be best known for its butterfly haven, which houses up to 1,000 butterflies of 75 different species. We'll tell you more about the Nature Museum next month as we begin another journey around Chicagoland on the CTA. I'm Dale Rivera. See you in October on Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area. Ha, ha, ha.